It's, it's time. The ATM, the Apologise to Me podcast. But before we get into any sport, what we're going to do is over the next wee while, because it's going to take a while, is first we're going to touch base with you, your life, Muruwai, and what's happening, mate, because it's too easy for the rest of us, Mark, to forget. And, you know, it becomes headlines. We all look at the pictures. We all feel, you know, like for you and all of that. And we offer some, the right words and things. And then all of a sudden, three weeks down the track, I'm bitching about something else, the price of coffee or something. Meanwhile, you don't have a house to go back to. So where are you at, dude? Uh, still just living with my mother at the moment in Milford on Auckland's North Shore, having to drop my kids back out at um, Waimauku School, which um, is an inconvenience. So, yeah, still no update on our houses and our street, still red carded, um, so still can't go into the property, still can't access any of our um, clothes or just any of our personal possessions at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, not much has changed. Um, but look, we um, had a large group of Murawai kids um, from the surf club go down and compete at the Surf Life Saving Nationals in Mount Maunganui for four days, um, which was a really, really nice time for a lot of the families involved just to sort of take their minds off it. And from a performance point of view, really high standard down there um, with surf clubs from right around the country. You know, Murawai had a really, really good um, Surf Life Saving regatta and picked up a record number of medals at a national level. And my little daughter um, picked up um, a couple of bronze medals, which, um, yeah, made us quite emotional, actually. Um, you know, really, n- not just the fact that she medaled at the national championships, but I just think for the fact that, yeah, we, you know, the tears are just below the surface with, I think, so many people who do live in Muraway. Oh, mate. It's the, it, what, is, what is the worst aspect of this? I bet it's not the physical nature of what's actually there. I bet it's the uncertainty, mate, and the not knowing, and you can't just get an answer from anyone, can you? No, we've we've got a, a public or well, we've got a um, town meeting out at the golf course on Thursday night, and hopefully some more information. But no, we don't. I mean, it's all very well going to insurance companies, but what are you asking for? Um, to what extent? Okay, so we need possibly, you know, under insurance, you, you you're eligible maybe for rent, but for how long are we renting? Um, how does that look? And so, yeah, it's just that uncertainty. It's just not knowing. It's just, you know, I'm sure my lovely mother, um, while she puts a brave face on, she's used to living on her own. She's probably sitting there going, when are these guys leaving? And I say that sort of tongue in cheek. But, yeah, there's a whole lot of people affected by this. And so, yeah, it's just not knowing. It's just not knowing. Am I going to be back in my house in six months? Am I going to be back in next week? Am I ever going to get back in? Uh, What does that mean to me financially? What does that mean in terms of, yeah, moving forward? Um, you know, our kids, as I say, it's about our kids when they get to the ages of nine and 11, their community is moody way. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to displace them. Uh, but you can imagine 150 families in one street all being red stickered, plus the other 50 or 60 homes that have been red stickered, and all of these people all looking for rental accommodation in a very small catchment area. So, um, yeah, difficult, but. You know, there's a second funeral tomorrow for the second of the firefighters. So again, um, you know, it'll it's another really big emotional time out there. And um, you know, I think and I think you've only really got to sort of look at that and look at those circumstances and um, you know, and just stand back and go, actually, yeah, this is not great, but it, it's not as bad as it could have been. Apologise to me. All right, let's get into the sport, mate. Um, And I just want to let everyone know that we spoke with Mark earlier today. So by the time of uh, recording this, England are now 80 for five. Now, the first topic that I was going to rip, snort and bust with you was the patheticness of last night's batting collapse, the selfishness of those batsmen, the uselessness of Bracewell getting run out and the fact that you know, we just needed to bat the rest of the day, set them 300. You know, we got history beckoning here for the first, only the fourth time in Test cricket history, a side that has had uh, been forced to follow on could actually win a Test match, and we just got pantsed. And then here we are. I mean, I, I was actually, I, I, I actually recorded myself at nine this morning, mate, saying that we're going to get uh, get wasted in the first session, that they'll bat this off for lunch. It's now 80 for five. And so I want to actually just mark this moment because does this make us favourites? All of a sudden, I hated them. All of a sudden, I might love them again. How pathetic am I? 
Oh, what it just highlights, though, is the magnificence and beauty of Test cricket, Martin, and why we need to make this the pinnacle, why we need to follow the philosophy of Brennan McCullum and go out there and do our part in making Test cricket exciting, have us on the edge of these seats, because Test cricket still has jeopardy. We've spoken in the past, haven't we? One day cricket, T20, score 100, people forget it. Score a Test 100. Uh, as in the case of Kane Williamson, suddenly he's on 26 test hundreds. It's part of history and you've got something to sort of be really proud of and you can look back and reflect. And it's just been the most, the, the strangest of test matches. You're right. I mean, New Zealand coming out and scoring 480 odd runs after being forced to follow on is unheard of in test cricket. You know, and I know if you're a betting man, Martin, you put your money on the team just capitulating, being all out for 160-odd, if you're lucky. Not just New Zealand, but most sides around the world. Now, for England, I mean, I just admire the way they go about this. Even if they lose today, the English, their media are not going to write them off. Their media are not going to bag them. The reality is this has gone to a fifth day, and they gave themselves a chance. But it's also going to just reinforce New Zealand's reputation in England of us just being this team of toilers, never write New Zealand off. And I know we as New Zealanders do, and I know I've been tough on them in the past, but it's amazing in places like India, Pakistan, England, they actually look at us as that gritty team. Never underestimate New Zealand. You might not be able to name five or six core players, but each country can remember at a time in a World Cup or a Test Series where we have done the unthinkable. This is what cricket needs. This is what New Zealand cricket needs. Let's hope we can get the job done. The disappointing thing for all of this, Martin, is that it is still on spark. Who is watching it? Is If we win this Test match, is it going to get the recognition and the significance that it deserves? Are a younger generation of kids when they're 20, 30 years from now, going to be talking like we do, Martin, about the about New Zealand winning in Australia in 1985, um, that famous Boxing Day test, 86, 87, which we lost, but had so much drama and so much theatre. So, yeah, look, fingers crossed that by the time this does go to air, it is one of the most famous test victories um, well, I can just tell you, I'm on, just telling you, on, on, the, the first inning, Martin. on the live win probability, we are now 50.2%, and I think we started the day at less than 5%. So this, look, this is just extraordinary. It doesn't take away what we saw in that last session last night, after toiling away, after all that grit and determination from Williamson, to then lose the last five wickets for 30 runs, and Brace will run, Brace will go out without putting his bat down. I mean, I don't, it's, you know, it's, I mean, I, I feel like throwing the TV remote at the TV quite often, Mark. But, I, I, you know, I, I had to have that re remote forcibly removed from my hand yesterday because I was just so wild and livid at that stage. And just well, and the un, just uncaring Tim Southey, stay there and help your mate get a century instead of just yeah. wogging away at it and throwing your wicket away every five minutes, mate. You're meant to be the friggin' captain, but all of that, all of that will be forgotten if we somehow manage to scum. Mark, this could be the fourth time only ever it happens. This is just incredible. And that is the beautiful thing about Test Crickets. There are just records and records and records. But I think this, that, that is the concern. If we win this game, does it suddenly, um, do we suddenly not recognise maybe some of the deficiencies? Because I think you're right. I think this Black Caps team has become a little bit carefree. Oh, we don't really care. Is the attitude as good as it can be? I think the pleasing thing for me is that Kane Williamson has stepped up when we needed him to, because I think he's been disappointing over the last 12 months. I don't think he helped us and helped our cause in a really good test series in England last year, where I think if he had a stepped up and performed, maybe maybe uh, England might not have won that series 3-0. The thing that concerns me, Martin, and by the time this goes to air, we might have a better idea. The problem with it is you've got Ben Stokes at the wicket. You've got Joe Root, Ben Stokes. This guy knows how to win for England. This guy yeah, is a superstar. Yeah. Mm. This guy is an X Factor. This guy can take a game in any form away from the opposition. Is this going to be another Ben Stokes moment for the English? Is this going to put Ben Stokes up there with Ian Botham amongst, without doubt, the greatest English players that have ever played the game? The stage is set, Martin. Ben Stokes, Joe Root. New Zealand five wickets with arguably a bit of a pop gun bowling attack. You know what? You know what? You know who's going to play a factor in this? The great man himself, Neil Wagner. Love that man. 
Draw live win probability has just flicked back to them at 50. I hate this thing. I mean, it just drives me crazy at 50%. Uh, 172 runs. That's where we're poised, people. 86 overs, which means they need two and over, which means that they can bat all day very conservatively and just push the singles and get the win. Do they have it in them? They don't play that way, Martin. They don't push singles. This is Baz ball. This is about playing positive. They're not going to play in two minds. It's probably more in Joe Root's natural instinct to play a little bit more along the lines of Kane Williamson. But Ben Stokes, it's about a positive mindset. It's about playing with freedom. We all know that Baz ball at some point is going to come up short for England. Is it today? Do they, for the first time, start questioning the way they play themselves with the way this test match is poised? Joe Root, play the ones and twos, Ben Stokes, just play to his plumbing. His plumbing is very much in the malt, very much in the ilk of a Brendan McCullum. It's going to be one hell of a session. Some of the most riveting test cricket. It's a shame that maybe only a thousand people are watching. That's, it, it that's the only problem, isn't it? There's more people, and this is the bizarre thing. For the first time ever in the history of test cricket, there are more people inside the ground than are actually watching live on TV because it ain't live on TV. It's been streamed on Spark. That's just yeah. bizarre. All right. Yeah, I, 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 I just wonder though, Martin, and maybe it's a point, maybe does this where the government does need to come in here? You know, they've done it in Australia, haven't they, to a degree where when it comes to. No, shite, no, mate. No, no, stop that stuff. No, look, New Zealand cricket are cash rich, mate. The this public. is No, this is where, you know, if, 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 if anything, the government should be pointing the finger at those that run these sports that make these decisions, that accept these sham deals and that take it away from the public. There's no way that my tax money should be going to contribute to this. Cricket is cash rich, mate. They've just got to actually get somebody to run the joint who actually cares about their customers. Same as rugby. I mean, you've just got bean counters. You've got fish heads running these things. These The, the, the administration of these organisations is inept. It's an it's inadequate and it's incompetent, mate. We've already known that. Super rugby but and the Martin, Warriors. But, I want to talk about those super rugby. But, but, but Martin, 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 Martin. You can watch women's cricket on Sky. Just reminder: you can watch women's cricket. It's as good as the men's. Apparently, no, it's not. The players. No, are it's on, not. The no, it's not. No, it's not. No, they're not. And we know that they're not. And don't even bait me on this. They are, mate. Martin. That's right. They are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. What kind of a person am I? I need to drag myself kicking and screaming into 2023. That's exactly it. Martin, I'm an old you're fossil. A yes, I am. You're I'm a, a misogynist. Martin. I'm a misogynist. I'm okay, sexist. You're a That's right. Misogynist, Martin. Yes, I accept all of that. But do you know what? I'm also an adult who likes what he likes and watches what he likes. Look, I mean, you know, I could be sat, I could be sitting there on a Monday, Tuesday night and watching Married at First Sight out of Australia. And I know that there are plenty of men in this country who do that because the person they are living with insists that they do it. Well, how about making a decision for yourselves once every now and again and say? Darling, I don't want to watch this. This is just absolute crap. That's the way I feel about sport. Some of the stuff I watch, some of the stuff I don't watch. I'm not going to be told what to watch on television. I get told every other aspect of my life, Mark. Same as you. We get told and we get told off every day. So isn't sport the the last survivor of freedom? Isn't it? Martin, 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 even the most courageous, even the biggest, the gutsiest, even the great gladiators would never, ever sit there on the couch and say to their wife, no. No, no, I'm not watching this. In actual fact, I'm enjoying it. That's what we say. That's what comes out of our mouths at times like this, isn't it? We sit there and we go. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm a broadcaster, Martin, and at home I've been reduced to about four or five words. Yes, honey. Sorry, honey. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Apologise to me! Super rugby, mate. I thought it was a cracking first round. Forget, 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 forget all the stuff that goes on in and around and behind and everything else and the, and the idiots who run the game. I thought it was actually fa- fun to watch, mate. I watched most of the games over the weekend or tried to watch bits of most of the games and thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, look, I was just delighted for the Blues, to be perfectly honest. Where did that come from? Um, how good did they look? Uh, I think what's concerning, though, is that can we really afford a team like the Highlanders? You know, we've got five first-class teams, as we've said. It's supposed to be the best players in the country. I look around and you question maybe the depth. I hope the Highlanders are better than that. I hope the Highlanders, as the season progresses, show us that they are a side who are in touch because I'm not sure it's a good thing if they are woeful, if they are the one team that other New Zealand sides are putting big scores on because suddenly we reduced our player pool by, what, 30, 35 players. Clearly not good enough when it comes to the All Blacks. But yeah, the Blues were magnificent. Look, I think it's good too when the Crusaders first up are beaten. I know that'll hurt the Crusaders fans, but they have just 
dominated for so long. And for the Chiefs, and the Chiefs have been their bogey team, haven't they, to go down there and beat the Crusaders in a really good second half. But I think the most pleasing thing for me um, was Ethan Blackadder. I just love to see Ethan Blackadder playing. I never really rated this guy um, initially. Maybe, maybe because I maybe because I never rated his father so much. But you know, boy, what a loss he was last season for the All Blacks, and how good was he in Super Rugby two years ago? And so to see Ethan Blackadder look to even just see Jack Goodyear back out there starting and playing. Um, and bringing maybe some solidity back to a midfield later in the year is really, really important. So, yeah, like you, I'll, I'll be honest, I was surprised by the Hurricanes over the Reds. I didn't pick that. Um, how much of a concern is that for the Australian sides that the Hurricanes can absolutely demolish the Reds? You know, the Reds are supposed to be the one shining light. You know, I think if this competition, Martin, is to get back to some sort of credibility like when it was first established with all the South African sides, we still need good Australian sides. We're constantly told they're coming. Are they coming? That's the big question mark. And I think that's probably where my curiosity will be heading into sort of, you know, this week, but probably weeks three, four and five. How good are the Australian sides? How good are the Highlanders? And yeah, again, how good are the actual Blues? But boy, what a great start from the Blues. Got to love the Blues. You love the Blues, don't you, Martin? Mm, my canes look pretty impressive away the Reds too, mate. So let's just wait and see. All right, finally, the Warriors. The Warriors are on Friday night. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be like that. We went out yesterday. We interviewed Adam Funu and Blake. We interviewed Sean Johnson. Sean's in the greatest shape of his life. He's ready to play a whole season injury free. He's ready to lead the team to the promised land. What I believe for a couple of days. Come on. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, Come oh dear. Yeah. Hey, 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 just wait a second, mate. I've just got the tooth fury at the door. <laughs> um, sorry, the East, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, they're coming. Hang on a minute, guys, I'm coming. Oh, look. Oh, Sean Johnson's there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, look, you cannot put back in what God left out. Sean Johnson is Sean Johnson. Look, he does some brilliant things in situations where there's no pressure against teams that are fairly average. When the pressure's on, we come up against the physical sides. He is nowhere to be seen. He is gun shy. He's a good player, but why do we continue to make a fuss around this guy? Why do we tend to make him our poster boy? What, because he's got more Instagram likes than you or me, or he's got more Instagram likes than possibly Richie McCaw, so therefore we've got him in the team? Look, I, I, the Warriors are going to have to do a lot this season to get me on side. People can say, oh, Watson, you're a doom and gloom merchant. You hate rugby league. No, I don't hate rugby league at all, but this Warriors team has to earn our respect back. Okay, if we're down on them, it's their own fault. But you know what, Martin? I've got a sneaking feeling it's been a, a, it's been a wonderful journey this year, and we're starting to build some depth. And oh, the players go. have shown some wonderful character. And here we go. Um, you know, look, Sean's. You know, I, I still think the psychological damage of COVID over yeah, the last no, two no, years. No, I don't no, think yeah. we should underestimate. No, I don't think we should underestimate that on either. the yeah. players. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, we've just been so unlucky with injury, and you know, having to travel across the ditch. But it's been a great journey. You know, we're going to hear all of that rhetoric, all of that crap. I just want us to win. And, and I don't care whether it's 13 Australians on the field. This is a franchise. This is an Auckland-based team. It's not a New Zealand development team. It's not a team to develop young talent in this country. Just go out there and win. But you're not going to do it if Sean Johnson is your marquee player. You are not. You cannot, Martin, put back in what God left out. I want to say this again too, Martin, and I say it every week, but I just want to drop it in again. If you're optimistic about the Warriors, get on a plane, go to Las Vegas, and just have a look around at the big hotels and remind yourself that Las Vegas wasn't built on winners, Martin. Devlin. Tomorrow! And Queen's Park Rangers have won it! The Platform.